be in the house of the Lord tonight. We thank you for tuning in. And um, it's a, it turned out to be a beautiful day after the storm we had last night. I was sound asleep. I was tired. Came in from work, did a little yard work, and went in. And um, we went to bed. And at 2 o'clock, my trailer started vibrating. The dog started barking. And uh, my little dog called Mama. She came over there and laid her head on my arm. And the, our little rat that we got running around was started moaning and yelling and hollering. And um, I never got out of bed. But um, it turned out to be a beautiful day today. And um, I've been in Tunica all day. Y'all remember my papa's family and y'all's prayers. He lost a brother today. And um, out of ten, I believe there's only three left. And um, it was one of the twin brothers. There was Larry and Uncle Larry and Uncle Harry. And um, he passed away around 2 o'clock this morning. And we went over there around 8.30. And we've been there all day. I just got back. And so pray for that family as they go through the process of uh, mourning the loss. And um, I've known them my, well, my whole life. And they're good people over there. So pray for them. And um, as far as I know, he made things right with the Lord. He got saved before he passed away. And um, my granddaddy, that was, his, that was his calling to do in the past months, was make sure he had everything right with God. And that's, 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 that means everything. And um, so that, that touches my papa. So y'all remember him and his family in prayer. And, but before we go on into the prayer requests... Let me tell you about how you can give to Willow Springs. But first of all, I want to say thank you for the ones who have get given to the church. We really appreciate your help during this time. I know we're living in trying times, but we still need your help. And um, God blesses the ones that give to His kingdom. And I always like to say it might not be financially blessing, but it might be a blessing you never knew you needed right down the road. So remember that as you give give to the church and um, there's a couple of ways you can give you can come down here on uh, Sunday we had a, quite a few people to come through here and give their money um, to Sister Darby and um, uh, Sunday night as well somebody will be here Sunday morning Sunday night and Wednesday and to take up your money all you have to do is pull up and um, somebody will see you out there we have cameras well, I think we have 13 or whatever many cameras in the church so we know when somebody pulls up and um, also, we have a debit and credit card machine, so remember that when you come, if you don't have cash on hand. Also, you can mail your checks or money orders and um, to 4600 Pope Crowder Road, Enid, Mississippi, 38927. And also, we have been getting great results out of our PayPal account, and that is willowspringsag at gmail.com. That's willowspringsag at gmail.com so please remember that and please pray about about your giving to the work of God and let God speak to you about it because I know the kingdom must go on and um, so as we go to the Lord in prayer tonight let's do remember our world and the crisis that we're in and um, it's a time of um, really searching your heart you know during this time and uh, you know, somebody said not too long ago, it really, it's really going to tell who the Christians and who the non-Christians are. And, um, and that's really true. That's really true. And you know, the other day, during this whole or, you know, ordemic, I was sitting at work. Let me, tell you, let me tell you how the devil works. I was sitting at work by myself. Nobody was around. And um, they were doing other things. And I just took a time by myself with just me and Jesus. And I said, you know, God, I'm so blessed beyond measure. I said, I'm not worthy of your blessings, but I said, you have blessed me in so many ways. I said, you blessed me with the home. You best blessed me with uh, a family. I said, you blessed me with clothes. You have blessed me with a job. I just went on naming all the blessings. And I said, God, I just want to take the time out and just say thank you. And not an hour after that, the devil jumped on my case. And everything went down south. And I'm talking about not just little. I'm talking about a lot. And you know, and I said, you know what, devil? That's how you work. I just gave my God all the praise and glory. And all of a sudden, you want to jump on my case. I said, you're not going to do it. And see, I could have went home. I, I could have went home. 
And on my way home, I was still mad. I was still bubbling. But you know what? I kept my mouth shut. And you know, I said, John, you got two options. I said, either you can let this go and don't say nothing, or you can take this home and go home and start it all over again. And you know what? I walked through the door, and my wife said, how was your day? I said, it was fine, darling. It was fine. Because there wasn't no sense of taking the d devil's junk home after I just gave God all the praise and glory for what he just blessed me with. I'm telling you, God is too good. I know we're living in a times that sometimes our faith is questionable, but I'm telling you, we serve an amazing God. We have an amazing Savior, and He is still blessing during this time of trouble and trials. And I know you're watching tonight. I had somebody all the way in Tunica, Mississippi, to come up to me today and tell me that they watch our program and how, how blessed they are to see us on live streaming. So I know we're living in trouble times tonight, but you can still receive a blessing. All you need to do at home is rebuke that devil, rebuke him in the name of Jesus, and still give the credit to God. Amen? Because he is still sitting on the throne. Can somebody say amen? Our God is not dead. He is not in the tomb. He's alive and well. I know we didn't get the chance to come together in Easter and celebrate Easter as a whole, but I'm telling you, our Savior died on that cross, and He rose again to give us life eternal with Him. So let's remember that. Let's remember all the sickness out there. Let's remember the ones that are going through trying times right now, and for God to reach down and touch them, and also, remember Sunday, uh, as, of, as of right now, we're doing um, outside service. I think we're going to start at 11 o'clock. So y'all be prepared for that. Y'all come, come on out and enjoy it. Last time we'd done it, it was a success. It was amazing. Everything turned out great out there. It was a beautiful day. So let's pray for that again this Sunday. Amen. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for tonight. God, we thank you, Lord, for your blessings. Lord, we thank you that you still bless in a trying time as these days that we're living in, God. Lord, we stand upon your word. Lord, we believe in your word, God, and we believe, God, that you can do anything but fail. Lord, you see the ones that are watching, God, and the ones that are not watching, God. I'm asking you, Lord, to come into their homes, God. Come into their lives, God, and reach down and touch them, God. And we stand upon your word, God, and we give you all the praise. And we give you all the glory. Lord, touch tonight. Lord, touch this service. Let someone receive a blessing. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Brother Dave. Brother Jared. Man, it's good to be in the house of the Lord. Well, I'm not like Brother John. I didn't hear the storm last night. I got up this morning. I asked Don. I said, did it rain last night? And she said, uh, yes, it did. But I slept like a baby. All right. Anyway, we're going to sing tonight the Glory Land Way, page 286 and A. Glory land. 
rejoicing in his love. I'm in the glory land way. Soon I shall see him in that home above. Oh, I'm in the glory land way. Oh, I'm in the glory land way. I'm in the glory land way. Just over in the glory land. I'm a home prepared where the saints abide. Just over in the glory land. And I long to be by my Savior's side. Just over in the glory land. turn to page 212 keep on the firing line Use the soul he can't trust. Keep on the fire. 
evil and to spread good cheer. Great we be rewarded for your service here. So keep on the firing line. Oh, you must fight. Be brave against all evil. Never run nor be the lag behind. If you would win for God and the right, just keep on the firing line. And when you get to heaven, brother, we'll be so glad. Keep on the firing line. How we'll praise the Savior for the call we Shout a welcome, we will all march in. So keep on the firing line. Oh, you must fight, be brave against all evil. Never run, no reason back behind. If you would win for God and the right, just keep on the firing line. Oh, you must fight, be brave against What do you want the Lord to say? What do you want the Lord to say? Well done, my good and faithful servant. That's what I want the Lord to say. Oh, what do you want the Lord to say? What do you want the Lord to say? Oh, what do you want the Lord to say? What do you want the Lord to say? Well done, my good and faithful servant. That's what I want the Lord to say. Oh, what do you want the Lord to say? What do you want the Lord to say? What do you want the Lord to say? Well done, my good and faithful servant. That's what I want the Lord to say. Oh, what do you want the Lord to say? Oh, what do you want the Lord to say? praise tonight. Amen, amen. Thank you, Brother Dave. Thank you, musicians. Appreciate that. What do you want the Lord to say? Well, I want to say I like all the pictures of you being here. Now, I have no idea who this is back here. Uh, I don't see a picture on that one. Uh, that's Brother Dave's family. They dropped out and stayed at home. Okay. All right, uh, I was wondering who that was, but anyhow, we're glad to have your picture in your place tonight. We appreciate that so very much. I appreciate you uh, uh, sending a picture. Let me say, we certainly miss you. We miss you being in church, but we will have a drive-up service Sunday morning, looking for God to bless us, looking for God to touch us. And uh, at 11 o'clock, we'll have church out in the parking lot. You'll stay in your vehicle, and if you have to come to the restrooms, you, you can come to the restrooms. Uh, have to get out and 
come to the restrooms and and uh, <clears throat> just uh, be in your car. And if you want to uh, blow your horn and say amen by blowing your horn, that will be fine. It's no problem with that. We just want a good time. I asked Tyler would he come down and help park the cars so everybody could be able to see. And he uh, he volunteered to come with my help, twisting his arm. But anyway, I want to I want to say that. And so uh, uh, we 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 appreciate the Lord. Now we don't know how long this is going to last. Um, we're not going to do. Uh, we're going to do what the governor says. Whatever the governor says, that's what we want to do. We want to follow the law and do what the law says. Uh, and so. Uh, whenever he uh, deems it, it would be safe for people to come to church. That's what we're going to do, and uh, uh, be in be in a group together. Let, by doing that, let me say this: our homecoming is supposed to be the third Sunday of May, and because of all of this, we're having to postpone our homecoming. So uh, we really don't know when homecoming is going to be uh, this year, uh, but. We're having to postpone it, and so, uh, but there's nothing we can do about all of that. And I do realize there are those having church, and that's up to them. But uh, we're going to go by uh, what the law says and do right, and uh, so uh, we want you to remember that. Also, let me say, Brother John was mentioned earlier about giving. Uh, when this started out, now a country church, a country church depends upon people giving. A country church depends upon that. I mean, a country church has to pay light bills, water bills, uh, pay staff and, and all, and so uh, it, it has a lot over it for a country church. And it's, uh, if you don't take up your offerings, then you're, you're, a country church can't, can't survive. I, don't, I can't speak for the city churches and big churches, but a country church, which most in this area, we're country church, we uh, it's hard it's hard to make it unless we take up offerings, and uh, we had to take up the offering. Uh, during during the beginning of this time when we couldn't have church, uh, the devil jumped up on me and said, "Now how are you going to be able to pay your bills? How are you going to be able to do?" And uh, I learned a long time ago we can trust God. He's never failed us. He's never let us down, but He's always been there. And uh, I give God a good report uh, standing here the next to the last day of uh, the month of April. And April was the best year, or best, best month, uh, that is, the best month we have had in probably years and years. I'm not, I'm not cutting a corner because of you. You helped, you gave, you carried a load, and I want to commend our church people for what you did and how you responded. And I appreciate that so much. That was one thing, one heavy load that was taken off of me during all this time, and uh, it was it was outstanding. We had an outstanding financial month, and I thank God for you that gave and and you that helped out, and and uh, just don't stop now just because we I mentioned that because uh, we'll still need it for the month of May coming up, and just do your part and do what you can. That's all I asked you to do. Just do all you can, do your part, do what God's best you will. In the book of Job tonight, the as I was studying, we're later on we're going to discuss the the resurrection of Jesus Christ and how and how Job saw that thousands of years before Christ came. How God gave him a revelation of Jesus Christ thousands of years before it actually happened. And the, the resurrection, how Job was celebrating Easter thousands of years before it even happened. That's just like God. So now we start to, tonight on uh, By the Skin of My Teeth, By the Skin of My Teeth, part two, about that. So now Job... Uh, is, is talking to Bildad, one of his friends. Bildad's giving him four pictures of death, by him dying a terrible death, and four pictures of it. So now Job counters that with, several, with seven illustrations 
of the trials of life. And he, he's not just talking about the trials of life being, uh, being you know, for, for somebody else. He's talking about the trials of life that he's been through. It's like Brother John mentioned earlier about we're going to have trials. We're going to have problems. But God's greater than any problem. God's greater than any trial. And first of all, Job compares himself as a desperate animal. A desperate animal. Job chapter 19, verse 5 and 6 says, If indeed you will magnify yourselves against me, and plead against me my reproach. Know, not, know now that God has overthrown me and has compassed me with his net. With his net. So, so here we have Job. He feels like he's been caught in God's trap. We've heard the story. We've heard him, we've heard him talk about God, where are you? God, what's, why is this going on? He feels like he's been caught in God's trap. Uh, he, he, he has not been running away from God. Matter of fact, he's been running towards God. And he does not have any idea why God would want to catch him in a, in a net. He has no idea why God would run him down and catch him put him in a net. But that is what he feels is happening in his life. He compares himself to a desperate animal, running, running. Running from who? Running from God. Then he compares himself to a defenseless criminal. A defenseless criminal. He said in Job 19 and 7, Behold, I cry out of Rome, but I am not heard. See what I'm saying? He said, I cry out of Rome, but I'm not heard. I cry out loud, but there's no judgment. Job feels wronged by God. So he's pointing his finger at God because of all this. He feels wrong by God because there are no charges against him. He hasn't done anything. Why is this happening? And there is no justice given to him. God, you're, you're not giving me any justice. He can't even defi defend himself. Nothing Job can do. Nothing can he, can he do. He feels defenseless. Nothing he can do. And on top of that, there's no one who will stand up and defend him. He's been asking for a mediator to help him. He's been designed a mediator. He needs a mediator. He needs a lawyer. He feels like he just doesn't have any hope. And now he compares himself to a detained traveler. A detained traveler. And Job 19 and 8, he said this, He has fenced up my way that I cannot pass, and he has set darkness in my path. Job could not see what was ahead because he felt like God had walled him in and darkness had been sent to devour him. He felt like he was in a place that he couldn't get out walled in and it became pitch dark in there on him he de a detained traveler I'm at a place I can't get away what am I going to do then he compares himself to a dethroned king a dethroned king in Job 19:9, he said he has stripped me of my glory who God has stripped me of my glory and taken the crown from my head. See, before Job's trials, before his trial begun, had ever begun, he had been one of the most important men of, that, of the East. Now, Job is relative, some people said that I read, a relative young man, probably in his 20s, 30s, rel relative young man. So before the trials happened, before the troubles took place, he was probably one of the most important men in the East. Now, he's laying in a, in a pit or in an ash pit, ash pile, and he's got sores off on him. He feels de de disgraced, and he feels dethroned. 
He has gone from the highest position to the lowest position. And he feels like, I w I'm a dethroned king. I'm at the lowest place in my life. He experienced totally hum humiliation. Humiliation. He experienced total humiliation. Then he compares himself to a dangered structure. Job's talking about himself. He's talking to Bildad about himself. You, you, you wished I was dead. You wished I died a terrible death. You wished things all uh, was against me. I'm telling you what I have experienced, what I'm going through with. Job 19 and 10, he had destroyed me on every side, and I'm gone. Everything about Job had once been strong. He was a strong man, very strong man. He had a strong family. He was strong. He had strong standing in the, in the community. He was strong financially. He had a strong faith in God. But now it crumbles. It crumbles. But now everything that was strong had been broken down into weakness. Look at our world today. Look at our world today. I mean, we, we're a strong nation. And by God's help, we're going to make it through this. By God's help, we're going to make it through it. We believe. We believe. We Christians, there are people all over the world praying and seeking God. But Job, he had strong faith. But now everything that he had seemed to be broken down like a broken building. Job felt ruined. He compared himself as a dislodged, as a dislodged tree. A dislodged tree. He said in Job nineteen and ten, and my hope had he removed like a tree. Job's hope is like a tree with no root system. You've seen them. You've seen these trees blow down. These humongous trees. Blown down in the last several years around here. And it seems like when it, when it blows them down, there's not much of a root system on it. It looks as though that big tree is just sitting on top of the ground. And that's what Job's saying. Job's hope now is like a tree with no root system. The storms and trials of his life have uprooted the tree, him, and there's nothing to hold it together. Boy, he's, he's, hope, he's helpless. He's hopeless. And finally, he compares himself to a defeated city. Job 19, 11, and 12. He has also kindled his wrath against me, and it countered me unto him as one of his enemies. His troops come together and raise up their ways against me, and encamps round about my tabernacle. Once again, here we have Job, who's expressing his feelings that God has decided to be his enemy, like an army encamped round about him. He feels surrounded by enemies. He feels like God is now his enemy. Job cannot understand why God has sent so much suffering into his life. Now, folks, we, we complain about so, so, so many small things in life. There was a book several years ago written, a very, very popular book, Don't Sweat the Small Stuff. Don't Sweat the Small Stuff. And sometimes we, we get so caught away with things that really it's not that bad. And you're really not suffering. You see, Bildad tried to scare Job with morbid and frightening images of death. But now here Job proves here, here that nothing was more dark and forbidden than the reality of his own life. He said him the reality. Pictures of Job's family and friends. In the book of Job, chapter 19, verse 13 through 22. The Bible says... He hath put my brethren far away from me, and my acquaintances are very estranged from me. My kinfolks have failed, and my family and my familiar friends have forgotten me. 
they that dwell in my house and my maids count me for a stranger I am, a, I am an alien in their sight I called my servant and he gave me no answer I entreated him with my mouth my breath is strong, uh, strange to my wife though I entreat for the children's sake of my own body. Yea, young children despise me. I arose, and they spake against me. All of my inward friends abhor me, and they whom I love are turned against me. My bone clampeth to my skin and to my flesh, and I am escaped with the skin of my teeth. Have pity on me. Have pity upon me. O ye my friends, for the hand of God has touched me, why do you persecute me as God? And are not satisfied with my flesh. Here we have Job. Job's experience has taken its toll on him personally. And I can't blame him. I stand here tonight and I can't blame Job. With what he went through with, with what he had in his life, I cannot blame him. We see in Job 19, verses 13 and 14, the impact of his suffering, that impact his suffering had on his family. He had put my brother in far from, from me, and my acquaintances are very strange from me. My kinfolks have failed, and my familiar friends have forgotten me. Let me tell you something, folks. It's something for strangers to get away from you. It's something from acquaintances to get away from you. But when your family leaves you, you feel like there's no hope. Just look at the powerful, lonely words that Job used. Estranged. Failed. Forgotten. Stranger. Alien. Offensive. Repulsive despise, at whore, persecute. These are words that explains how Job feels. And we can't point our finger at him and blame him. Because look at this man. Look how we studied about him. Look what he's gone through with. And notice the order of things, how, how his emotions are generated. See, Job feels estranged first from his brothers. You know, I have one brother. I have, we was, it was three of us. Mike passed away two or three, year, three years ago almost. And now it's just Charlie and myself. And uh, we, feel cl we feel close to one another. We're brothers. We, we feel close. But now he feels like my brothers have left me. Then he goes to his acquaintances. His relatives, his close friends, his servants, his manservants, his wife, his children, all young children, and all those he loves. This is probably one of the loneliest passages in the entirety of the Bible. It seems that just about everybody has come to the same conclusion concerning Job's three friends, or as Job's three friends. That Job is suffering because of his own sin. And Job is getting exactly what he deserves. We all know that it's difficult to be around people who are suffering. We don't have the words sometimes to say. We don't know what to do. And so the excuse of Job's guilt made life easier for everyone around him. So after Job showing Bildad the pictures of his life. Then Job makes one final plea for mercy. He says in Job 19, 21, How pity upon me! How pity upon me, O ye my, my friends! For the hand of God has touched me. You see, it's sad to see Job's friends unmoved by that cry. It's sad to see them not pay any attention. Imagine yourself pouring your heart out to somebody, asking for help, and they are unmoved by your cries. So before we move to the next 
move into the last section of this chapter, I want to take a look at an expression that is as old as Job, and yet part of our everyday plain language right now. We use some of that plain language that Job used. In Job 19 and 20, he says, My bone cleave it to my skin and to my flesh, and I am escaped with the skin of my teeth. Every one of us heard that phrase. Every one of us has heard that. But he said, with the skin of my teeth. Nobody seems to understand what he means by that statement. Speculations, different speculations. Some said it meant that he was so far gone that all he had left was his gums. He didn't have no teeth. Others speculate that uh, if there was skin on his teeth, that is how close he was to death. Or that his body was so weak that all he, all he had left was skin on the teeth. We don't know. We really don't know what he meant by it. But we do know when we say, by the skin of my teeth, it barely got by. Barely happened. We just made it through it. However you want to explain, however you want to explain this expression, it meant that Job was at the very end of a desperate condition. He's about as low as you can get. Now we see the pictures of Job's faith. In the midst of such terrible suffering, Job offers up truly stunning words when he said this. In Job 19, 23 to, through 27, and I want you to pay very close attention to one verse. Verse 23 says, Oh, that my words were now written, oh, that they were printed in a book. Think about that now. He's writing this when it's going on. He's saying this. Were printed in a book that they were graven with an iron pen and led in the rock forever. For I know that I know that my Redeemer liveth, and that he shall stand at the latter day upon the earth. And here it is. This is what he said. And though after my skin worms destroy this body, yet in my flesh shall I see God. And though my, after my skin worms have destroyed my body, yet in my flesh shall I see God. You see, he's speaking of the resurrection here. The resurrection. Verse 27 said, Whom I shall see for myself, mine eyes shall behold, and not another. Though my reins be consumed within me. Looking back at that speech today, seems strange. Because Job longed for his words to be etched in granite so that people throughout time could read them. He wanted people to understand what he was going through with. And he wanted God to write that in granite where people could read it throughout. And that his thoughts would never, never be forgotten. I'm sure he never dreamed that, that Willis Springs, Assembly of God Church, on April the 29th, would be talking about him thousands and thousands of years later. I'm sure he never thought his words would not only survive him, but actually live for the moment, live from that moment to the very day and beyond. Job endured such pain and suffering. So how unexpected in the midst of Job's speech on his trials is this great affirmation. That great affirmation. For what Job is talking about in this passage is the resurrection. Can you believe that? Talking about a God of the Bible? He believes that he will see his Redeemer. After going through all these things and being angry with God, he believes that he will one day see his Redeemer. One great writer said that moment, putting that moment in the right perspective, said this. 
This is one of the most triumphant statements of faith in all the Scriptures. It may well be the earliest announcement of the resurrection to be found in the Word of God. Gradually out of the anguish and despair of this man's heart, a realization had dawned. God is working out a great and mighty purpose in human history. A day will come when God Himself, a God whom Job had consistently viewed as the epitome of majesty and power, shall become visible, present before humanity. He shall appear on the earth and vindicate all that He does. So in this statement, Job looks ahead by faith. That's what we're doing. We don't know what's going to happen. I'll tell you Sunday morning what's, what I think is going to happen. I'll tell you Sunday morning in the message, I'll tell you what I think is going to happen. We don't know what's going to happen. I'll tell you what I think is going to happen. We can look ahead in faith. Job didn't know what was taking place. But he looked ahead in faith to the incarnation of the Lord Jesus Christ. Job began to get the revelation of who Jesus really is. And to the world out there this, tonight, I wonder if you know who Jesus really is. Was he a good man? Was he a good teacher? Was he a good brother? Was he a good friend? Do you know who he is this, tonight? See, God enabled Job as he began to say these prayers, who, who Jesus was. But when Job uttered those famous words, he was not just seeing ahead to the first Easter morning. He was seeing his own personal Easter. He was participating by faith in the resurrected glory of his Redeemer. Now, how emphatically... He uses personal pronouns. He uses personal pronouns here. Pronouns here. Job said in Job 19, 26, And though after my skin worms destroy this body, yet in my flesh shall I see God. What an incredible passage of Scripture. Rising up out of the dust and ashes of a broken man. It reminds us all that no matter how things might turn out in life, we don't know. We've never seen it like this. Nobody has ever seen things like we're seeing. Almost 30, 26 million people unemployed. People out of jobs. Talking about now about a food shortage, a meat shortage. Talking about being business being closed. Maybe school starting not in the fall, but in, in the spring next year. We don't know. We don't know. We have a hope though. We have a hope that we can depend upon God. He said, I'll never leave you, I'll never forsake you, but I'll go with you even to the ends of the world. Reminds us, no matter how things turn out, for all things work, to good, work out for good for them who love the Lord and are called according to His purposes. This thing that's working right now is for our good. We don't understand how it could be for our good I pray Sunday morning I can tell you why it's going to be good for us. You see, our hope is in the risen Lord. That's where we can put our trust. We can't put our trust in Donald Trump. He's only a man that God uses. There's no doubt in my mind. God's using Donald Trump. Can't put our trust in the Republicans. They just like the Democrats. They're all in it together. We can't put our trust in the governors, but we can put our trust in our risen Savior, Jesus Christ. You can put your trust in Him. 
who will one day return to this earth and receive his church. We'll return one day. So Job speaks to us of the glory of God, his plan for us. He speaks to us today. In 2020, Job speaks to us about the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. He speaks of this great moment in time, in the future. Boy, it's closed. I talked to a man yesterday. He don't even go to church. But he said, maybe God's trying to get some people's attention. I said, I patted him on the shoulder, and I said, you hear that? You hear what you said? You better pay attention. See, God speaks. Job is speaking to us of this great moment in time when Almighty God will finally and forever put death away. Put it away in exchange for eternal life. You see, folks, if you don't know Jesus, you need to know Him. You need to know Him. You need to know Jesus as your personal Savior. You need to know Him. You see, for many people, Easter is a holiday. Just a holiday. Hunting Easter eggs. We didn't get to celebrate Easter normally this past Easter. We still celebrate it in our homes and in our hearts. But as far as a collective body, we weren't able to come to church and, 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 and celebrate Easter. But it becomes... A holy day for those who have put their trust in the risen Redeemer. You see, tried, tested, and triumphant. Job is that man. Tried, tested, and triumphant. What a man. No wonder God told Satan. You can do what you want, but you can't take his life. Because God knew Job would stand for him. What about you tonight? Will you stand for the Lord? Will you stand for him? That is the end of that study. By the skin of my teeth, we'll get into another study next, Sunday, next Wednesday night about Job. And going forward, I'm excited because... I want you to understand the end results. I want you to understand this man. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we certainly thank you for being with us tonight. We thank you for the Word. We thank you for the lesson to teach us that we can depend on you. And I pray, God, that you'll bless our people, bless our church, bless Brother Jimmy and his family with the loss of their loved one. God, I pray that you will bless our people who are sick in their body. And those that are watching right now, God, I pray that you will lay your hands upon them. And I pray that you will touch them and you'll bless them in Jesus' name. Remember the service Sunday morning. Come at 11 o'clock. Tune in at 11 o'clock. We're going to have live streaming. We thank you for joining us. God bless you. It's our prayer. We'll be praying for you. You'll be praying for us. And until the next time, God bless you.